it's all right. If it, if that were to happen, we could just edit it out, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, um, also, hey guys, how are you all? Hey, how's it going? I am, uh, I am Shadow Death Blade 93, but this is going to be, uh, going on to my Inferno Shadow Blade 95 channel, because I mm -hmm. put the old podcast there. Yeah, so. and I am the CEX, so, whoopee. Yeah, as Zach mentioned, this is a uh, this is a podcast. We had like a similar sort of thing years ago, but uh, I guess we're gonna try and make this a semi regular thing. We don't really have a schedule, but hey, these are kind of fun. They're easy to do, and we get to talk about you know what's going on in the world of oh, yeah. games, music, movies, whatever the hell we want to talk about. So yeah, yeah. especially uh, of what I've also been doing recently as well. Exactly. So. We actually, uh, we're go we were going to record this, like, two weeks ago? <laughs> uh, this is being recorded four on weeks October... Ago. <laughs> four weeks ago. Oh, God. This is being recorded on October on. 17th. So... I hate this thing whenever it's muted. Sorry about that, folks. I got fucking interrupted like fucking shit. It's alright. I'm pretty sure we just cut that out. But, uh, shit. Yeah, what, what were we saying? Oh, yeah, right. Basically, just the intro, yeah. Um, yes. as, as mentioned, don't really have a schedule. We were supposed to record this a while ago. But... Basically, I think how most of these are going to go is we picked some topics. Uh, Zach picked some, I picked some. And we're going to go in no particular order and just talk about it. So, mm -hmm. topics for this one are Microsoft buying Bethesda, which is a little old news now, but there is something new that happened today. Yes. Uh, something about the Sly Cooper series rumors on HBO. Is that a rumor? I don't really remember. It is slightly a rumor and slightly new. Okay. And there's the Necopar Volume 4 announcement, which, uh... <laughs> we'll get to that. <laughs> which I suggest, uh, yes. And then we also and, have one of Resident Evil 8. Yes, we're going to talk a little bit about Resident Evil 8. And there's also the Left 4 Dead 2 Last Stand update. And With drama. With the drama, because there's been some drama around that, and I think that's about it. There is, like, a general discussion thing, but other than that, that's pretty much the big topics we want to jump into. Uh, so from that list, Zach, where do you want to start? I'll let you pick the first topic. Um, hold on. Let me see if this is... Okay, yeah. It is, uh, capturing your voice, okay. I was just checking the <laughs> Make thing. sure. <laughs> it would it would suck if it wasn't capturing my voice. <laughs> yes, it would, because that would be like um, um, let's see, um, like Bandy Cam or uh, Cam Studio. Allowed. If you did not fully set up Bandy Cam at all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. With perhaps it's a, it's a different story. Um. Anyways. Um. First. Uh. First topic <laughs> that we want to choose. Um. What What would be the easiest one? I'll up to you. I'll I'll let you pick first topic. Um. Out would, of uh, uh, how about some RE8 Resident Evil? Um. Right. Since down. Resident Evil 8 is being released in 2021, 2021. Whew. Um. That's going to be a while, but it, I don't think it won't be that long. It's also called Resident Evil 8 A Village. Mm. Now, what I think about it, uh, when the uh, the terrain and area that you're in, it looks like you're in Romania, Transylvania. Yeah, it, 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 that's kind of what it seems like. It's in like a kind of European-style thing, which looks pretty cool. And uh, I'm digging it. When I think about it, of one of the... Uh, in one of the trailers of it, I, I saw a, per a person turning into a werewolf. 
Yeah, there there seems to be like uh good lord. There seems to be a lot of like really kind of uh horror elements, like kind of like hammer horror elements. Like, you know, there's vampires seemingly, there's werewolves apparently, zombies, <laughs> which is a major aspect zombies of Resident with... Evil. Yeah. Of our yeah. one and two, three. I kind of feel like that's the only thing that's kind of tying it into Resident Evil, the zombies. That in, in res, tied to Resident Evil 7, but the only thing that ties Resident Evil 7 to the other games is Chris Redfield being in the game. And he's also in, in the new one, apparently, so it's like, huh. Yeah. Actually, there was also <laughs> another game that has zombies. Uh, I do believe it was uh, RE6 with the C-Virus version of the zombies. Yeah. Yeah, this is about... Just about every Resident Evil game has a type of zombie, you know? Yeah, so like, like, RE4 has, like, the... Yeah, like, some sort of B.O.W., as you said, yeah. Like, Resident Evil 4, it's like, what, Las Plagas? It's like that weird virus yeah, bug um, thing. Yeah. That appears in Resident Evil 4 and 5, Las Plagas. It's yeah. a parasite strain. Yeah. But yeah. it comes from the See, same... Same uh, progenitor strain as the T virus and the other viruses combined. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. But if you guys n never read the uh, one of the Resident Evil comics, there there was a werewolf that does appear in it, and Jill kills it. Oh, huh. huh. Now, when you think about it. When you think about it, do you kill a werewolf with silver bullets? Eh, it depends, but depends on what uh depends on what kind of it depends on what version of the story is uh being told. Yeah, of werewolves, for <laughs> it example, depends, including with yeah. vampires. Um, now here's the thing: vampires and werewolves are both supernatural beings of paranormal things. They are monsters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, if you look at a ghoul that is sort of uh, a zombie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So For sure. But they are sort of dead and sort of not. So that's a ghoul. <laughs> yeah. Now, if you compare, uh if you compare some of the uh, monsters, uh, if you look at um, most of the Resident Evil monsters of the B.O.W. series, um... There's a lot. There's a lot over each franchise of the game series, uh, including in the side games. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like Revelations, for example. Um, the uh, T-Abyss uh, virus. All right, all right. Now, RE8, we don't even know what virus is in it. Yeah, see, that's what I'm most curious about with that game, is like, how how is there suddenly werewolves and vampires? Like, is is it a is it a BOW thing or is it a paranormal thing? Like, how an original Resident Evil Four was supposed to be? Like, what's what's the deal with that? I'm really curious to know what's up with that because it's like it's different, very different. Now let me explain. Um, Ray, do you remember uh, when Blade in in the Marvel comics vampires were were born of a virus that turns people into vampires as well? Yeah, yeah. That's what so, I'm thinking. Like, that, that could be what happens with um, that whole thing in RE8. But, you know, we don't know. You know? <laughs> see, and there's also, it, there's also the lycanthrope virus, which is a werewolf. Yeah, which is basically a werewolf virus, yeah. So, it, now, that might be the route they go. I don't know. Now, okay. if you guys never studied anything like this um viruses are pretty much uh they mutate time to time on their own as well like mm -hmm. right now we're we're dealing with covid and that's a uh, mutating constantly um yeah. yeah it's uh, it's already a tough time as it is um anyways uh back to uh re8 um <laughs> we uh Pretty much of what Capcom is going to be. Uh, now we do see uh, seeing Mia dies, literally. Yeah, which is. Um, I wonder if that's actually she's going to be dead, dead, or like, oh, maybe she still has the molded virus. You know, who knows? I don't. Really maybe know. she's a carrier because she was given the yeah. uh, serum 
in uh, RE7. Yeah, but... If you never played and beat RE7, she was given the serum, which is sort of a cure to the E type, which is uh, the E virus, which is the, uh, you know, yes, what... where the molded are from, which is a spoiler alert if you never played RE7. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> Probably shouldn't have said spoiler warning, but uh, whatever, it's fine. Um, yeah, that that's a possibility. It's probably the case for Ethan, too, you know, considering he was also in, in that mess and he got infected, I think. Or he got, he at least got, like, he at least got, you know, because yeah, there is that one part of the game where, once again, spoiler alert, there is that one part of the game where, you know, he's, like, seeing Jack Baker in, like, a, an illusion, basically, like, in the hive mind. You know, that kind of makes me think, oh, yeah, maybe maybe he got infected, you know? Because otherwise, how would how would he have been able to talk to Jack, you know? Now, so. the final boss of the game, spoiler alert, of RE7 is Evelyn, also known as E-Type 1. Which yeah. Which means she and is man, the only surviving subject of her kind. Yeah, she's disgusting looking. Yeah, a very <laughs> disgusting little bitch, uh, or I should say, old bitch. But um, because <laughs> she was deteriorating little old really bitch. quick. Yeah, yeah, and her kind of like a weird reverse Benjamin Button. But <clears throat> spoiler warning as well. Um, the reason why <laughs> Evelyn's uh, downfall was is because of her obsession of family. That was her yeah. downfall. Hmm. Now, anything that anything that is obsession of all Resident Evil villains is because they want power. <laughs> like Wesker, for example. <laughs> Spoiler warning. Uh, right. RE5. Yeah, Virgil. <laughs> double make, right? But uh, uh, we're not talking about double yeah, make, right? right. <laughs> we'll, we'll, talk, we'll talk about double make cry another time. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Yes, um, with uh, Resident Evil has been around for a long time, and this is number eight of the main game franchise. Yeah, which is, uh, ooh, excuse me, pretty uh, cool. I do like how seven took an FPS direction. I also like that eight is still going with the FPS direction. Okay. And I think that's what makes the, these two games really unique, is that perspective. Because literally every other RE game at this point is either... Uh, force perspective or fixed camera position and, or uh, over the shoulder. Now, so, four and five, cool. though, is mm, the fucking aiming aspect. That's standing in one spot <laughs> bugs me. <laughs> T the tank control aiming, basically. Yeah, yeah, I don't blame you for not liking that because it, it is a little archaic, but it's not bad. It's just it's not, not as I fluid as. You know, when I was modern, younger, so. I was so used to five. It wasn't even funny. I, I don't know why I was used yeah. to five when I was younger, but Jesus Christ, <laughs> I regret that so much. Oh, yeah. <laughs> For clarification, uh, anybody listening, I haven't actually played any Resident Evil games. I've only played the Resident Evil 7 demo, but I, I own four on PC, but I've not played it. So, eh, yeah, yeah, I don't, I'm not, I'm All not right, a Resident Evil professional, sure Resident but I. <laughs> But I uh, I do know about it, and uh, I do think it's pretty cool. I am a fan loosely, but I've not played the games. I just think they're pretty cool. You know, it's a pretty cool lore and world, and just I think the games are neat. Now, so <laughs> if you have not caught up with my uh, channel on Shadow of Blade, um, I have recent I have beat RE Seven. Yeah, he recently did RE Seven. Yeah. Go check yeah, that which out. Is, which is my first official uh, RE7 that I ever... Uh, RE7? <laughs> RE game I've beaten. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got uh, you. <laughs> Goddamn. Uh, first official RE7. Uh, now, all I, right. I won't I won't begin the uh, DLCs on that, on that game yet. Oh. So. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of DLC for that game yes. in there. There's a lot of DLC for that game. Yeah, it looks like, like I have not a hero for free. So, yeah. <laughs> not a hero. Oh, not a hero is the, uh, the um, Chris Redfield one, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, okay. Because I remember that one loosely, and I remember... I think the one I remember the End most is the one where you're playing as a... 
and yeah, and the Zoe. Yeah, that's the one I remember the most because I I just I don't know that one. That one seems to be the most unique out of the bunch. Honestly, I think that one it sticks out to me. Cooler because uh, you can punch, <laughs> punch, punch. Yeah, who who is that guy again? Is he like um, is he, he like is, Jack, uh, like brother? Jack's brother, or? yeah. Brother, yeah. Okay, that's what I. Thought. I don't remember his name. Yeah. Though. I want to say it's Joe, but I think it's not Joe. I, I think it's Joe. <laughs> I, I think it's Joe. Is it Joe Baker? I think, I think it, it is. is Joe. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> I'm sitting at a computer. I could Google it, but honestly, I don't feel like it. <laughs> now, now, you might be wondering, RE8, are we going to be playing as uh, Ethan again? Mm, yes. That is probably a big yeah. huge maybe. <laughs> I feel like... I don't know. Here's here's a wild Ray prediction, TM. I feel like you're probably going to play as Ethan in that game, but I feel like you might also play other characters as well. Kind of like in RE7, where you swap to Mia in that one segment. Yeah, but I feel a, like... Then there's RE6 with the three, uh, with the four, uh, actually six characters that you play as in uh, co-op and uh, mm-hmm. solo. Uh-huh. And then there's uh, Ada. I forgot. <laughs> I forgot there were so many characters in that game. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like they're going to try to probably do that again in RE8, except make the characters actually different, aside from, like, the view model and, like, the voice and all that. I feel like they might give them different statistics. Maybe. Yeah, yes, that's what we're talking about. Now... Because I feel like that that just, that just makes sense as a natural step up from RE7. Now, eyes. can we bring back Leon? That'd be something. Uh, Leon and... In RE... In, like, that... Hmm. You could, but I don't know how you would make it work. Like, hmm. Or you could bring I feel back like if Claire. they were to, if you were to bring back Leon, it'd probably be like with Chris, where like he seems like they kind of reworked him. You know, like his story is kind of different. I'm not too sure though. Well, he worked for the president, and the the president um, turned into Kennedy. a zombie in RE6. Yeah. And he uh, shot him in the in the head. Blame the movies. But you blame the movies, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And speaking of which, <laughs> of, of Resident Evil, there's going to be a new... Uh, there's going to be a new that... series on Netflix. Yes. There's going to be a Resident Evil Netflix series? Really? I didn't yes. know that. Yeah, it's going to be have Claire what... and uh, Leon. What the hell is it going to be about? <laughs> I do not know. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't hear about that. That's kind of cool. There was a trailer. Right. Oh, there's a trailer. There's a trailer out for it. Yes. Okay, I'll have to look at it later. One teach one to one. I'm not again. 2021. Yeah, there's a lot of things coming out in 2021, huh? It's all right. Now, um. If we thought about any more Resident Evil stuff, um, please don't bring back the spiders <laughs> or sewer levels. Oh, the, the spiders from what two? Is that what you're talking about? Two, three, or three. Oh yeah, there don't. There, there's a lot of spider animes. Uh, I swear that there there was also a jumping spider one um, on Dark Side Chronicles. <laughs> Ew. Yeah. No, thank you. I don't like jumping spiders. And jumping spiders. Those jumping spiders, man. They they have fucking big ears, right. fucking eyes. It's not even funny. <laughs> They're gross. I shoot them with a high caliber rifle for no reason. But I still did not like those b- the Black Widow enemies in uh in uh Veronica. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame. You. They look so disgusting. They look like a big giant fucking mutated zit. <laughs> When I think about it, mm-hmm. but uh, uh, no bugs, mm. no more bugs, please. Yeah, I I already had enough bugs of because of RE seven from Bug Bitch, <laughs> <laughs> Miss Bug Bitch uh, Marguerite. Thank you. Ray knows exactly what I'm All talking right. about. Ugh, don't even get me started. Sorry, I was reading something. I was listening to you, but I, I was reading a message. Sorry. But, uh, yeah, overall, um, I'm looking forward to RE8. I don't think I'm going to be able to play it. It depends on 
you know, if I get a better PC. <laughs> yes. But um, I'm interested in it. I'll probably watch a playthrough. I'm pretty sure Markiplier or somebody will do a playthrough, and I'll watch that. But, um, yes. yeah. Uh, overall, I'm looking forward to it. I'm curious to see where they take the story from Seven, and I'm hoping that, uh, well, I'm just hoping it's not dumb. <laughs> Hope not. That's about it, really. Because, um, yeah. Pennsylvania, Romania. Mm. That's a good setting. It's a good setting. I like that idea. Because, oh, please, I hope we don't deal with a Plagas again. God damn. I, I, I like the last, I, I like the Plagas and like the like the design of most of the monsters that come from it. But like, yeah, I don't know. What wasn't that in all? Wasn't that in Resident Evil Five as well? Yes. Like, didn't they bring? Didn't they bring that back in Five? Yeah. See, I don't really think they should bring that back again. And they also They're brought back the liquor. Oh, of course I would. Frickin' liquor. But a lot more larger. <laughs> you, you look like a big giant mutated bullfrog to me. Okay, so it's a, so a thick liquor. That's what we're yes. gonna call that. Thick liquor. Alright, called... while we're going through... Go ahead. I do believe in 5 it was called Lurker... Lurker? Liquor Beta, I think. Excuse me. I'm not sure. I haven't played. I haven't played five or any of the games actually. But well, I've played the demo to seven. But you know. But I'll take your work work. But here's the thing. Uh, Re 5s uh, <laughs> sewer area. Oh, Resident Evil and their sewer games, right? Sewer levels, not my favorite. Stop it with the sewers, <laughs> Capcom. <laughs> I know you. Just, they do have a fetish for sewers. I I know you guys have a fetish for sewers, but god damn it, <laughs> <laughs> I fucking hate sewer levels in any game, especially. In at the least it's game. not as. <laughs> at least it's not as bad as Cry of Fear. Cry of Fear really likes sewer levels too. Don't fuck. Yeah, remind exactly. <laughs> that remind. Yeah, just that right there. Like, at least he didn't screenshot my fucking face of going like, don't fuck remind me. <laughs> yeah. Alright, uh, is there anything else you want to add on RE8? Because I think um, I'm ready to move on. Um, if there's any other uh, B.O.W.s that will appear other than vampires and werewolves? Oh boy! That, I think that would be a doozy. I'm pretty sure that'll happen. It's a Resident Evil game. <laughs> <laughs> Resident Evil games are pretty wild, so I could see it. You know. Now, as a side am, note, Zach, as I ahead. am looking up the uh, the one liquor, yeah, it, it is uh, called Lurker. I mean, I am thinking about the fucking frog of Bow in freaking Resident Evil. Ew! <laughs> Literally, it's called Lurker. Lurker. Oh <laughs> Lord. Okay, yes, Excuse it me. is called Liquor a Beta. Because it has a, the, you know, the beta sign. Yeah, 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 I gotcha. Beta. Uh, seriously, liquors can go fuck themselves. I agree. <laughs> I agree. I also hate them in Operation <laughs> Raccoon City. Yeah, they're, uh, they're gross. I don't like them. Because they could stab you with their tongue and affect you. Which is very fun. <laughs> Yeah, no thank you. I'm good. Now, but, um, um, who will be the big bad in RE8? Don't know. Probably no idea. Probably the new umbrella or something. Who, who the fuck knows? Probably. That's one part of the game we don't really know much about. You know, so I guess all, that's something we could just. Mainly, we all know who was the main antagonist in the entire RE RE series was Umbrella. Um, yeah. What was that one corporation in, uh, in RE5? Oh, lord. I know what you're talking about. Uh, but I can't remember the name. Ah! Uh, I don't remember the name. I, I have my old, uh, I have my old phone out right now. So, uh, give me a sec. Mm. Oh, That's Tricel. Fine. Yes. <laughs> God. Oh, uh, yeah, Tricel. Okay, That's what I'm... That, that, yeah, alright. <laughs> and then that there's a familiar. new okay. umbrella in RE6. Mm. 
Which, yeah. but there were three big bads in that, of each campaign. <sighs> yep. <laughs> and there was the uh, major big bad of the uh, uh, corporation in uh, RE4. <laughs> cool. Of that little midget dude that controls it. <laughs> oh, um... Cells are... Oh, what... Now nah, he wasn't the one who controls it. The guy who controls it was the uh, the the bigger dude who turns into like a weird scorpion spider thing at the end of the game, and you blow his ass up with a rocket launcher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were they name. were a fucking cult, as I recall. <laughs> yeah, pretty much a cult, which is interesting concept. I like that. Um, yeah, I don't really have much else to add on this. Uh, I'm pretty much covered everything I wanted to cover. Now. How about you? For Steam, for Steam, it will be coming out on, I don't fucking remember, um, give me a sec here, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going on Steam with this. Now, if you, if you never played any of the uh, Resident Evil games, you can still get them on console, but you can also find them on Steam. Now, you won't find the original RE two and three on there you will find the remakes now the remakes are pretty good resident evil village and that's eight <clears throat> release date is unknown uh all it says is 2021, okay. so... Yeah, there's no definitive release date. It's just slated for next year, so... Alright, alright, fair enough. And, uh, anything you want to add, Ray, before we move on to the next topic? Um, no. I'm pretty much... I'm pretty much covered, honestly. Um... Um, I was going to say, this is not related to RE8, but uh, as we're going through these topics on the Discord uh, DM, I'm going to uh, add a little check mark for what for the ones we've covered, as a side note, just so we can keep track. Okay. Yep. But uh, um, anyways, Zach, Zach picked the first topic. But uh, there's I don't one more thing I would earlier, like to but... add, though. Okay, go ahead. In RE8, if it would be possible if they added it put all viruses in, in the game. Hmm. Maybe. Cause it could happen. There, there were all kinds of samples. Probably they picked up a sample of Albert Wesker, because he had all the freaking mm. other viruses in him. Of course he did. <laughs> yeah, because he he turned him into himself into a freaking monster. Yeah, because he's power hungry. Oh, yeah, he's power hungry. I'm sorry. I'm yawning a lot. I am trying not to yawn. Yes, I know. But God, I'm tired. Damn. Okay. Shit. All right. Well, uh, I was going to say that Zach picked the first topic. I'm going to bounce to the next topic. And this is one I've been kind of wanting to talk about is the whole thing where, you know, Microsoft just casually bought Bethesda <laughs> out of nowhere, basically. Yeah. Um, I guess I'll start by asking you, what do you think of that? Like... I mean, I mean, it's a, it's an interesting idea, but they're still going to make their games. They're still going to make their games. They're still going to be called Bethesda. I cannot even say the word. <laughs> <laughs> they're still going to be called Bethesda. Yeah, they're just underneath uh, Microsoft's uh, wing, basically. Yes. Now, yeah. Microsoft has been around, like, forever since uh, Gabe Newell left mm. Microsoft. Yeah, Ga I almost said Gabe, Gabe Soft. Oh my god! <laughs> Microsoft has been around for a long time. Yes, um, um, if you don't know Gabe crazy. Newell, he, he's a ex-employee of Microsoft, oh, and he is the CEO of Valve Software. Also known yeah, as and one Valve. of the founders. Yes. And I'm pretty sure you know who they are. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it, it, if you don't yeah. know Valve, go look up their greatest games. Yeah. 
Which was Anyways, um, back to that. Uh, yeah, it's interesting, and I think it's cool, because I, I, am, I feel like Microsoft might try and knock Bethesda into more of like, hey, do some quality control on your games, you know? Because yeah. we all know how bad Fallout 76 was, right? That's, oh, lord. I do believe that's the reason why. <laughs> because Fallout 76? Eh. Well, here, to me, here's what I think. I think Microsoft bought Bethesda because it's like, oh, look at all these IPs that Bethesda own. We could buy them, and we can make them exclusive to Xbox and PC. And uh, I'm pretty sure they're going to do that. Because uh, actually today, or it was either today or yesterday... Uh, Phil Spencer, which is, you know, head guy at Xbox and all yes. that. He, he basically said that they, uh, that, uh, Microsoft is n under no obligation to keep releasing Bethesda games on other systems. And, yeah, oh, nice. that's like, mm, that basically just kind of tells you what they want to do. It makes more sense, because it's like, okay, well, they bought them because now they have even more exclusive IP. They have Doom now. They've yes. got Fallout. They've got, what, Dishonored, I think? Something like that? Or some Dishonored, other stuff like that? I think so, yes. Um, yeah. I can't remember everything off the top of my head, but the ones that come to mind are Fallout and Doom. Like, that's like, they got some pretty big things. Oh, Skyrim! Holy Jesus, how did Skyrim. I forget that? Skyrim, yes. Elder Scrolls, yeah. Stuff like that. So, they have all that underneath Microsoft's hood now, and it's like, well, if you want to play any of these games, go buy an Xbox, or go get a PC. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> now, it, it, now you can still get the old, older games of each game yeah. uh, on whatever system yeah. you have, but you won't be able to get the, uh, yeah. get the future releases. Yeah, that's not confirmed, but that's what he said. And that basically means, yeah, we're probably not going to do... We're probably going to have console exclusives, and we, maybe some of these will be cross-platform, but most of these are going to be console exclusive. Or, not console, um, Microsoft exclusive. Excuse me. Yeah, if if anybody would probably... Anyone would probably try to kill uh, Spencer for that. Like, I'm being real with you. I understand the whole thing of exclusives. Like, in, in this day and age, that's kind of what keeps consoles alive, in my opinion. Because PCs are so good that you can basically play anything on them. But the thing, the thing is, since that's the case, you need a kind of like a, a, a reason to be like, okay, you want to buy a PlayStation because, oh, we've got, like, exclusive games. You know, we've got God of War and da 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 da, -da. And I think that's kind of how Nintendo makes a ton of money, is a lot of their things are exclusive to Nintendo systems. Like, pretty much all their shit is like, Nintendo For exclusive. example, if you look at, fa like, famous and old uh, Nintendo uh, franchises, like um, yeah. Metroid, Mario... Uh, Zelda, Zelda, Pokemon, like, they're, they're all them. on Nintendo systems. Yeah, like, and, you can't play them on, like, Xbox or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> and even uh, the PlayStation, um, Sony. Um, if I could think mm. of uh, mascots up from the top of my head, um, Crash. Is it a Crash Bandicoot a mas mascot? Yeah. Crash is one of them. Even though, even though he's cross-platform at this point. Sly, yeah, Sly, Jack I think Dexter. is pretty is it exclusive. Yeah, God of War. That's another one. Yes, um, Ratchet and Clank, Ape Escape. Yeah, Ape Escape. Uh, jeez, I like. I'm not a huge stuff? Sony guy. Uh, uh, medieval. No, medieval. kinda. I don't know. It depends on the games, I guess. <laughs> uh, medieval is one of them. Uh, with Sir yeah. Daniel Fortescue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I, yeah. I love the medieval series. But uh, I guess my question to you, and I guess anybody who wants to talk in the comments about some of this stuff, is how do you feel about that basically being gonna, ha not basically being, basically going to happen? Like, would you be okay with the next Doom sequel being exclusive to Xbox and PC? Would you be okay with that? Mm, I mean... I'll be honest with you. I mean, it's me personally. Whatever, you know. Yeah, you know, it's whatever, but I feel like it kind of sucks for some people that 
you know, because, you know, not everybody has a ton of money. There are still a lot of people out yes. there who have to buy one system, and that's what they get for years. So that, that kind of sucks for them. And that, if they, especially if you, if you own a Nintendo Switch, that that game won't be on the Nintendo Switch. It'll just be on the Xbox. Yeah, and PC, most likely. Yeah. So, stuff like that. Like, that's what I'm saying. It Exclusives, you know, that's how they sell systems and shit. But, excuse me. But, um, I don't know. I feel like it's kind of a, a dirty move. And that's hard for me to say because I love Nintendo. But, you know, Nintendo does that all the time with everything they own. Uh, Even Bayonetta 2 is Switch exclusive, or Wii U Switch exclusive. It's not going to be on any other systems anytime soon. Shit like that is like, ugh. Yeah, not at the moment, unless something drastically changes, which, uh, well, I don't know about that. We'll see. But, um, yeah, I, me personally, it's kind of whatever, but honestly, I'm not a big fan of that. I don't really like exclus- exclusivity shit like that. But I've never been Gabe a big fan Newell, of that. Gabe Newell does have support for uh, Nintendo Switch controllers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. We could talk about Joy Cons in another in another uh, podcast. But Joy-Cons. old man, do I? Oh, I'll talk about it. I will tell you how I feel about Joy Cons. <laughs> I'm talking about the uh, as a the as a man who's controllers. had a the pro controllers are nice, but okay, off topic. Anyways, um, yeah, I'm not a big fan of it. Zach, like you said, you said that it's kind of whatever, it doesn't really matter to you. Is that, is that how you feel about that? Or? But still, it would suck for those people that cannot get the game. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That, that's kind of what I'm looking out for, is folks that can't afford to have every system, or like, like a really good PC. You know? Like, let's say, like if, let's say if Microsoft buys, uh, rebuys like Valve, it. for example, that would suck. You know, there was that whole thing, I don't remember, this is kind of unrelated, but there was that thing where Valve was almost bought out by EA. Do you remember that? Oh god, that happened I a while ago. that so well. Yeah. That was, that and was I a think, long time ago, too. Yeah, I think Valve was kind of like, we don't want to like sell out. And it's like, good, please don't ever sell your soul to EA, or anybody like that. Ever. <laughs> and so, Honestly, if there's one... Uh, now, now, go, EA, go now EA has to like, put their games on Steam, and, and now Valve and EA are cool with it, with, with their stuff. Oh, EA put their, game, EA put their games on Steam because their actual launcher and all that was kind of trash. <laughs> they needed yeah. Steam. Um, no, but, but yeah... I, I'm, I'm, I've been collecting the games that weren't on Steam before till this year, mm-hmm. which yeah. it took EA a long time to put freaking Crisis 3, and I knew they were going to put Crisis 3 and Dead Space 3 on Steam, eventually. <laughs> mm-hmm. Especially freaking Titanfall. Titanfall yeah. 2. God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't just... Oh, man, I don't know. Anyway, like um, it, I think it. I will just say one thing before we wrap it up. This topic is, I think it's a good thing overall, but there is a caveat of exclusives. I do think it's a good thing for Bethesda because I think that means their uh, maybe their games will be uh, you know not a broken mess on day one because <laughs> Microsoft will hopefully be like, hey, quality control. You know, I hope that's the case. But other than that, not a big fan. Not a big fan. Yeah, it's not. It's, that, it's, it's not very go ahead. good. It's not very good. But if they, say it so, might be they good for the, so, but it, 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 it might still, be good for the quality of the games. But it's not going to be great for people who can't afford to have a lot of systems or a good PC. Yes. Now, uh, if. Yeah. If you're like a famous YouTuber or a famous uh, Twitch streamer, then you can then you can fucking <laughs> afford that shit. But <laughs> or or if you've got like a or if you've been saving up a lot of money working at a nine to five or something, or like you got a good paying job, you know, or you work like I, example, like I think like that, that kind of shit. If you work work your ass off, you deserve that shit like that. That's great. You know, more power to you. I hope you have fun. But uh, 
if there's anything else you want to add, go ahead. Otherwise, I'm ready to bounce to another topic. But uh, still, this is uh, the you know I, I <laughs> now since id um, id has been making Doom for a long time. I I, I um, enjoy Doom. I enjoy Doom. Yeah, that's the one thing I'm worried about. Honestly, is like oh man, you're gonna make Doom. Xbox and PC exclusives. Like, PC I can get. You know, Doom's built for PC, but... Uh, uh, that kind of sucks for other folks who don't have a that sort of thing. Beseda does not own id. No, they... They own the, they own their parent company. They own Zenimax or something like that, isn't it? I don't remember what it is. Yes. Maybe. But, so uh, technically... Uh, I, I think it's like Bethesda owns them, but like Bethesda doesn't control the development team. It's just like they, they're the publisher. But now it's Microsoft owns Bethesda, so it's more like, oh, I guess their own. I guess it is owned by Microsoft now. Which yeah, is interesting. But if uh, it wants to make games for uh, for other systems, it's it's still cool. Yeah, like like you know, like I said, Phil, what Phil said wasn't a blanket statement of, yeah, we won't, we'll have exclusives, but what he said implies they're going to have exclusives, so just keep an eye out on that. <laughs> now, what I, what I, I do have a surprise topic, but uh, it's going to be a bonus topic uh, if, if anybody, if, uh, if me and Ray wants to talk about it. Um, so, uh, yeah, anyways, uh, that's it about this topic. Uh, I think uh, you want to move on to the next one? Yeah, you can go ahead and pick the next one. We got one, two, three, four left, or three, depending on how you want to go about it. So I, pick, pick. Uh, I think I want to start off with the Sly one. Okay. I'm going to be real with you up front. I have very little knowledge of this series, so Zach's probably going to be the one who talks about it the most here. But Because I ahead. played the three main games, and uh, four a little yeah. bit, but... Um, here we go. Um, if you guys don't remember the Sly Cooper series, it came out for the PS2 uh, back in the back in the early 2000s, uh, in the time of Jack and Dexter was first being released. Now, Sly Cooper and the Thievius Raccoonus, very good, but the main villain was Clockwork, a uh, mechanical robotic owl, which was a Eurasian owl. Now, to give off, uh, if no one doesn't know, um, the Sly series is, uh, when you think about it, it's like a, um, like an old, uh, like a modern era compared to, um, Star Fox. There you go. <laughs> because of the, uh, the similar animal sort of thing, anthro-animal yes. sort of deal yes. going on, yeah. I could, I could see that comparison, yeah, for sure. Yes. Um, Sly, Sly is a thief, if you don't even realize. He comes from a, a family of master thieves known as the Cooper clan. I do know that. And all his family members carries a cane, which is meant for stealing, but they don't steal from ordinary, from normal people or anyone that is good. They, they steal from other thieves. Mm. Or even corrupted law enforcements or whatever, such as um, Tennessee K. Cooper, and uh, he's the outlaw. And there's also <laughs> there's a uh, one of my favorites, um, Ruichi Cooper. He is a ninja mm -hmm. of Fido Japan. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about. There's also Sly 4, but I'll get to that in a minute. Um, now, fast forwarding after defeating Clockwork in uh, Sly 1, you will. This goes into Sly 2 Band of Thieves, which is a sequel of Sly 1. Now, after completing the Thievius Raccoonus and Sly is doing his own adventures, they, the Cooper Gang, have to steal. All the clockwork parts. And the clockwork is still alive. 
He's not. He's not a normal bird anymore. He he is a giant owl. That's that's a fact. Because he's been around since um, Slaika Commons uh, time, which is uh, ancient Egypt. So he's like hundreds and hundreds of years old. He old. Yes, and he turned, of how he stayed alive for hundreds of years, he made the fountain of youth full of hatred. Of turning Oof. his mortal body into machinery. And that's what he said during the uh, Cold Heart of Hate uh, chapter in Sly 1. Mm -hmm. And he showed up in all the uh, five main pages of the Thievus Raccoonus. After you beat each boss. Mm -hmm. Before facing Clockwork. Now anyways, back to slide 2. You are facing the Claw Gang. Mm -hmm. Which is kind of dumb. Even though it's uh, silly in a way. But after you find out the Clockwork mm -hmm. parts were stolen. Before Sly can get to them. Before the Cooper, Cooper Gang can get to them. Sly has to run from the cops. Including his uh, love interest, uh, Carmita Motoya Fox. <laughs> like, how, how can a raccoon fall in love with a fox, right? Right, exactly. But, you know. Yeah, <laughs> but, cops and robbers, um, but, they, I'll get to that in a minute after I discuss slide three afterwards. Now, Another, uh, after speed running through the game, once you get all the way to the final mission, which is a major pain in the ass, <laughs> um, which is episode 8, when, when Clockwork is fully reassembled after uh, John Bisson sold all the parts to Arpeggio. Mm -hmm. And he's a parrot, and he cannot fly at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, but he has a, a, an intelligent brain. Because he couldn't even keep up with the other kids and other bird species of his, mm -hmm. you know. Now, right. when you think about it, you start to feel bad for Arpeggio, but it, hmm. but it still was pathetic that he, that he had to reassemble Clockwork and and insert himself into Clockwork's mainframe to become Clockwork. Yeah, so, it, it, it is effed up. Because, <clears throat> but guess who does not become Clockwork? Hmm. Arpeggio. <laughs> well, there you go. He gets betrayed. Just like the others. <laughs> Just like anyone else in that game. Mila betrays the Cooper Gang, Interpol, and even the Claw Gang themselves, and now Arpeggio. She just fucks them over. <laughs> all. <laughs> and then she goes into the Clockwork mainframe. And awakens herself as Claw Claw. Uh, like a shorter version of Clockwork uh, Nila, as you yeah. uh, can say. Um, but uh, yeah, that I really hate that. <laughs> and she kills Arpeggio. She just crushes him with her, with her beak. Shit. Yeah. Yeah. Now, fast forwarding after you destroy all the engines that will that will give Claw Claw power, so she can hypnotize the entire town of hatred in uh, Paris. Right. Now, after taking care of that, you and uh, Carmita face off against Claw Claw mm -hmm. in a chopper. And damn, I hate those fucking. I hate that kind of fight. <laughs> I really do. That. Yeah. 
fight was a that fight was a doozy. I like the clockwork fight yeah. more in Sly One. That's for sure. Right. <clears throat> now, after you defeated Clockla, her her beak slams down on Bentley, and he becomes crippled. He cannot move his legs anymore. <laughs> now there are there is comics, there is a manga of the Sly series, but I don't remember what they're called. Just keep that in mind. All right. <clears throat> Now, after the events of Sly 2, the Cooper gang starts to hide out from the world, but Murray blames himself for not for not keeping the beak uh, of clock lot open. Mm -hmm. And he blames himself for not being strong enough to help his best friend. Bentley and Sly did not blame him for that. But instead, uh, Murray blames himself. Now, this this gets to the events of Sly 3. If And, and none of you uh, never played the Sly series. Um, I suggest getting the uh, PS3 uh, HD collection. Because uh, if you still have the PS2 uh, PS2 uh, console and the games, then yeah, go play those. You'll see what I mean. Play all the way through them. Try 100% of them. <laughs> I'm not 100%ing those <laughs> if I wanted to. But yeah, um... Ugh. Excuse me, I had to sneeze. Whew. Now, uh, in the events of Sly 3, um... This is when I start talking about the Cooper Vault, which holds millions of the family Cooper fortune. Ooh, man. That's a, lot, that's, that's a lot of business for the Cooper clan, if you ask me. Exactly. And this, this, this monkey, which is a baboon, he's a, he's a tech whiz like Bentley. Spoiler alert, if you never played uh, all the way to the end of Sly 3, because Dr. M was a former member of the original Cooper gang that was in that was in Sly's father's gang. Right. Uh, Sly's father did die in the first, in, in one of the, if, if you've never seen the prologue cutscene of Sly 1. So... But it, it yeah, shows man. up again whenever you're going to recruit uh, the Panda King for the Cooper Cooper Vault job when you go back <laughs> go back to China. <laughs> now, oh God. yeah. <clears throat> now, when you think about this, um. You recruit several new members for the two two of them you might know as uh, villains from the two uh, two other games. One is Dimitri, and the other one is the Panda King. Now you get the Guru and Penelope. <laughs> And goddamn, um, Penelope is the RC specialist. Guru is the Dreamtime uh, telekinetic uh, specialist. And and then you also got Panikim as the demolitions expert, because he uses fireworks to explode things. And uh, then you got Dimitri. He is for Diving. God, I hate the diving levels. <laughs> Sharks, uh, crab claws, you name it. I fucking hate. The, I fucking hate those missions. Uh, but um, yeah. Um, after after you 
recruited all of them um, and reuniting with the Cooper gang, um, you start to realize that Dr. M knew Sly of being just like his father. But that that was a long time ago after uh, Sly's father died, and uh, after the cane that you possess is the key of the Cooper Vault. And Dr. M has trying to crack that thing for years. <laughs> he became so paranoid of building, building a fortress like uh, Fort Knox, in a way. Full of this, mm. full of automated, now, as a side, full of automated as turrets a, and all, and uh, you go ahead, Rick. As a side note, I didn't mean to cut you off, but what what he's since we're talking since he's talking about this, uh, the main point of this is that uh, supposedly there's supposed to be an animated Sly Cooper series on HBO, apparently. Yes, or Which on is, uh, uh, the PlayStation uh, thing, but uh, I'll talk yeah. about that in a minute. Yeah, so that's the main topic. He, Zach has given you an overview of the series, though, because like, I, I know people know about it, but I don't think it's super popular. So, yeah, continue. I'm right here. So, after, after you defeat uh, Dr. M on the biplane, uh, after Sly recovers from that um, giant abomination uh, motherfucking thing whatever it was called um <laughs> i don't even remember what it was called but um yeah <laughs> carmita was there that's for sure so uh yeah she uh -huh. did she does have feelings for sly that's a fact now if you never uh, played all the way through slide three. I suggest doing it now, because uh, do it. Spoilers ahead, right now. So after you beat Doctor M on that dragon whale fly weird ass motherfucking thing, <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck is that? Mm -hmm. Sly steals back his cane from Doctor M. After he got mad at Dr. M of saying, like, Bentley is going to be ending up like like Dr. M at, if uh, Sly abandons and becomes not a good friend to Bentley. But Dr. M was so wrong about that. <laughs> so, uh... After he steals his back, he goes all the way to the Cooper vault and contacts Murray and Bentley to get inside. And he wants them to... It's like they were thinking they were sidekicks, but they were they, they are a big, huge family after being orphaned uh, for so many years and being a team and a family at the same time. Mm hmm So that's how they got to know each other back at the orphanage. <laughs> now, uh, after after Sly finds out he has to go on his own into the inner sanctum without Murray and Bentley, it 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 sort of saddens him in a way. Yeah. Which I which I could tell from the voice uh, from from Sly's voice actor, um, Kevin... I know his name was Kevin. Kevin Miller? I think? Yeah, Kevin right. Miller. Kevin Miller is Sly's uh, voice actor. Um, you start to wonder, where are we going in the Sly... in the Cooper vault? Well, you start to see every test that the ancestors left for you. <laughs> now, all these ancestors have sp specific moves, specific move sets that you have to use throughout the vault. 
And once you get to Sly's dad's uh, work, um, it it's never mentioned in the Thievius Raccoonus, which was a new move that he did not put in, which is called the laser slide technique. Now, when you go all the way to the inner sanctum, you face Dr. M. After defeating Dr. M as Murray and Bentley. And that he placed a tracker on Sly's cane, which uh, he cheated through the uh, area to follow Sly in. Yeah, um, it, it was smart, but in the end, he he got defeated after uh, after trying to harm. Uh, spoiler alert: After you defeat uh, Doctor M as Sly, then you face him again as Carmelita, which yeah, uh, final boss. There you go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but after he. After the cuts, Sly pretends he has amnesia, so he could so he could uh, be with Carmita, and that gives you a warning bell. Like, what did he do? Right. Like he wanted to be with Car Carmita that that much, literally, because yeah, because uh, Doctor M was about a was trying to kill her. That's... It's insane, because uh, how paranoid can you get of wanting to kill somebody? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, seriously. Now, Dr. M dies. That's a fact. And the Cooper Vault comes crashing down on him and killing him in the process after everybody escaped. But after Bentley of a few years of becoming Penelope's lover, they rebuild the Cooper Vault on the exact same island. And Bentley says, Who knows, whenever we can, I'm going to be building a time machine and find out. What does that lead to? Sly 4. Now, warning. Sly 4, um, try not to judge. This is Sony's fault. Not, not Sun Zero's, not Zan Zero. Zan Zero's uh, fault. The reason why it did not make so many cells is because Sony rushed and uh, pulled the cells off. Mm -hmm. Of not letting the cells keep going. So, yeah. that's Sony's fault there. Good going, Zony. Like, like, try to understand. Zanzaru did their best of making Sly 4. It wasn't good. It wasn't bad. It, it was a decent, well-made game. And all you're trying to do is reclaim all the freaking... Trying to meet up with Sly's ancestors and reclaiming their canes at the same time. Because right. Lou Paradox was after their canes, but not Sly's, because Sly's cane is the main cane in the modern era. Like, what the hell? Yeah. Like, shit, um, there was supposed to be a DLC for Sly 4, but no, Sony decided to pull that shit again. I was saying, no DLC for that game, and it was the part where you can get Sly out of ancient Egypt. Literally. <laughs> like, would we be able to meet Sly, the Sly to Common? The, uh, the, the creator of the Thievius Raccoonus. And we could have, we could have easily get Sly out of there. Now, anyways, after you beat the game, 
you see Sly in, the, in Ancient Egypt, which is a big cliffhanger. It's the secret ending. If you, yep. ne if you never, ever played the game or watched anyone play it, I suggest looking for uh, playthroughs of uh, probably uh, people that you uh, like. For example, SGB. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Super exactly. Gaming Brothers. Because uh, Elliot, Super Game Brothers. Elliot has played all the Sly games on the channel. So mm -hmm. go look them up. I'll have to catch up on it. I need to watch more of their stuff, for sure. Now, back to 2016, there was supposed to be a movie. But that was, uh, del that was delayed. It wasn't technically, uh, canceled. Or scrapped, right. for example. It was just completely delayed. No news of it after that. Now, all the way to this, all the way to 2017 to 2020, the TV show was announced. I'm mm -hmm. like, what? <laughs> now, the TV yeah. show was supposed to be uh, aired by Technicolor, but then Sony bought it back from them, hmm. which was going to be on their uh, streaming service of PlayStation something. I don't remember what it's called. Um, yeah, me neither. But HBO, um, if they manage to have Sly, the TV show, to air... Of the next year, please don't have Sony <laughs> take it back. Seriously, I, I want this to come out. I want to see it in in the light. Because Sly has not been in existence for almost since 2013. Oh. Yeah. Yikes. Yeah, that's uh, Sly 4's era there. Anyways, if anyone has any questions on the Sly series of the Sly topic, um, please let me know. And uh, even yeah, drop yeah. it in the comments. Yeah, go so, crazy. Or I will ask the major, um, the one channel that I always watch of Sly Cooper topics and uh, theories uh, would be Vinatin. <laughs> you can look him up. He also does uh, Sly Cooper stuff as well. Uh, go look up his channel, and I'll probably put his link to it in the below, in the description, so you can look him up, because he has Sly Cooper Crash, everything, <laughs> including Kingdom Hearts. He, he, he is a fan of those games. I'm not joking. Excuse me. <laughs> Especially being a big, huge PlayStation fan like myself. There you go. Anyways, um... Now, uh, this topic is done, and uh, if you have anything else to ask, um, let me know in the comments if I missed anything. Now, Ray, you're up. <laughs> well, yeah, I was going to say, sorry for not saying basically anything about that. Like I said, I don't really have much knowledge on that, but honestly, for your sake, I just hope that that series is good, and I hope they uh, do another game, honestly. That's what I hope for. Oh, I better hope so. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll be smacking yeah, some I, I around. So. <laughs> All right, we've got three topics left. Um, one that you suggested, something I suggested, and a bonus topic that uh, you said earlier. I don't know what it is. <laughs> He's going to yeah, surprise me. Crazy. So, so I guess we'll go on. I guess we'll talk about the last stand update. Because yes. uh, there's some interesting things going on with that. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, is uh, well, after almost 10 years or something like that, nearly 10 years, Left 4 Dead 2 finally got an update. And the update added a new campaign based off the Last Stand survival map from Left 4 Dead 1, as well as almost 30 new survival maps from Left 4 Dead 1, along with a couple new ones based on Left 4 Dead 2 campaigns, as well as the Last Stand. Left 4 Dead 1. Yes. As well as two new melee weapons, a ton of animation fixes, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of stuff. CSS weapons available to everybody instead of just being exclusive to the German and Australian version. 
I think it was just Germany. I don't remember. But, um, yeah, that happening, you know, there was a lot of crazy stuff in that update. And if you check out Zach's uh, multiplayer channel, we've been uh, playing more Left 4 Dead 2. Yes. Enjoying the update. It's been a lot of fun. I wish I had a better PC to play it <laughs> at the moment. Yeah, that you but, could um, have recorded it yourself as well. Yeah, and, I like, it's been... Yeah, it's been really cool, but there is there has been some interesting things going on. Um, primarily, it seems like there's actually a lot of people who aren't happy with the update. Now, I'm going to speak this from my perspective. Personally, I think the update is really solid across the board. I do have some problems with it, but I feel like a lot of the complaints from other people are a little weird, but I do understand some. Like, me personally, I think Honestly, like, I don't know, like, just, I don't remember, I, I had a better grasp of what I was going to be talking about, I'm sorry, but, um, yeah, like, the big one, a lot of complaints I've been seeing is that the game, this, oh, excuse me, this update ruined the game because it broke a ton of mods. And? How do you feel about that? Yeah, and, exactly, like, and, as Zach says, like, dude. I'm sorry that this broke some mods for the game, but, like, I know that the mods kept the game alive in the community, but, I mean, from what I understand, they actually added some stuff that makes modding easier <laughs> in some aspects. I think they added more stuff you can do, technically. I'm not sure. I think they fixed issues with the uh, the Workshop publisher, which I always had a fuck ton of problems with that thing, okay. so it's Here, nice. Here's a drama from me, everybody. For almost 10 fucking years, people, the last major update was either for the Left 4 Dead 1 campaigns or Coldstream coming to Left 4 Dead 2 on on PC. I think the th I think I think it was Coldstream. I think that was the last update. I think yes. it was Coldstream, and that was a community created a thing. Yes, and um, that was the last. The, that was the last. Uh, <laughs> that was the last update. update. Yeah. So Cold get, your ass, is, um, get your heads out of your ass and appreciate what you got. <laughs> yeah, like here, here, like from what Zach said, you know, appreciate that the fact that the community involved were even like, okay, let's actually get an update. I appreciate that happening, but at the same time, you you can criticize it, of course. There's a lot of criticisms, but some of it feels unjustified. Like for example, there's a lot of people like, oh, it ruined the game because it broke mods. The Left 4 Dead 1 common infected coming back. We didn't want that. It just breaks stuff. Nobody wants it. It's just something that these stupid, nostalgic people want. It's like, dude, I mean, yeah, you could say that if you want, but, like, honestly, I don't understand that logic. It's like, it just adds stuff to the game. It makes the Left 4 Dead 1 campaigns closer to the originals from the first game. I don't see what the big problem is, honestly. I don't, I don't get it. That, that argument, I do not get Yes. Now, being, ups being upset about mods not working, okay, that's fair. But at the same time, if you don't want, if, the, if your mod that you really like isn't working, ask the developer the mod to fix it. Or make your own. Or fix it yourself. Learn how to do it yourself. Because, like... Yeah, if you want to if you you criticize the freaking game so bad, um, do it, you, make a mod to fix it yourself. And don't be a scumbag yeah. about it, you know? Yeah, and a good example of that is somebody actually made a thing that reverts the Left 4 Dead 1 zombies spawning in the Left 4 Dead 1 campaigns. It replaces them with the Left 4 Dead 2 zombies again. And the reason they did that is they wanted it so that you could, they could have it back so that they can use common infected mods with no problem. And yep. they didn't disrespect the team or anything. They were like, this isn't to disrespect the team. We just wanted to do this for mod compatibility, basically. Cool. That's a good way to go about it. Yep. Now... Congrats, yeah, congrats just, on that guy. Congrats on that guy of making yeah. that mod. Yeah, but... Yeah. <laughs> my, 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 big, my main thing here is I think the update is amazing, and I really hope that it is, this allows for Team Fortress 2 to get a new update. Like, that would be great. Oh, Team Fortress God, 2 really needs yes. a new update. Left 4 Dead 2 getting a new update, honestly, one of the highlights of the year for me. Even on a toaster PC, I'm loving it. It is so nice. 
Hey, the last little major little update that Team Fortress 2 ever got was that Inferno event. <laughs> Jungle Inferno. Yeah, that was the last big update. And that was a couple years ago at this point. Or yeah. a little more. I don't know. Or probably two years ago. But, uh, I, two or three. But anyways, uh, yeah, I think it's really good. But I am going to mention some criticisms for me personally. Um, I think that some things are a little, a little broken. odd. A little broken. For example, shovel and pitchfork not cutting limbs off or decapitating things. I mean, a little weird. what they could do is, like, add in some little gore, like, effects yeah. and uh, things that happen to the zombie. Yeah. Like, you see four major holes from the uh, pitchfork whenever you stab a zombie. Yeah, they, they can do that, because the gore system is really flexible in that game, from what I understand, but my With point is, shovel. like, in the trailer, in the trailer, I didn't mean to cut you off, sorry, in the trailer, you can actually see them, like, cutting limbs off of zombies with the pitchfork and stuff with the shovel. But in the update release, it doesn't happen in the game. And apparently it's because of a script error. And they also broke the crowbar, too. The crowbar doesn't uh, cut people anymore. I didn't know that, but yeah, that's a bug. That's a bug now. Crowbar doesn't gash people and gore people, gore zombies. It's like, yeah, how does that... Whenever, how does the, that whenever <laughs> the next update, whenever they fix it, stop bitching yeah. about it. <laughs> yeah, like, like, it's cool to be like, hey, you got a bug, but like, don't const don't be like, oh, this ruined the game because it broke this, dude. They're taking feedback. They're gonna fix it. Just give them some give it time, time, you know. Now, yeah. One of the other uh, drama things was uh, from uh, from Valve News Network, the uh, Tyler McMahon oh, guy as well. Um, yeah. Pretty cool guy. I like him, but yes. he does have some moments. <laughs> But I don't remember the full extent of the story, but basically I think somebody, like, leaked, um, or was trying to leak the update to him. And the, in, this is from his perspective. So basically he was like, normally he'd be, okay, cool, I want to know about this. But since it was a community project that was tied to Valve, and Valve is, well, they kind of don't like stuff getting leaked, you know, like any sane company. Yeah. Uh, Tyler was basically worried if he got a hold of that and spread an info about it that they would just cut ties and cancel the update, basically. Which, uh, fair worry, honestly. That's kind of a fair concern. Yeah, so, I, we don't I remember... Wanna, we don't want to push this uh, any further, but seriously, don't don't be trying to do that, people. Don't, don't encourage yourself yeah. to do it. Just, just to end it off, he did tell the pe other people on the team to get rid of the person that was doing it, and then that person was the one who caused the big stink on the Steam forums and was blah, 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 blah. I got kicked off the team, but I didn't really give the full story, and I think now it's kind of calmed down at this point since Tyler spoke out about it, but yeah, like shit like that is like, come on, what were you expecting to happen? Like, are you trying to get this update fucking nuked by Valve? Come on now, don't do that. Like, seriously, like, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like I, I, like, I get it. I get the intentions, but at the same time, too risky. Especially with the last community thing that Valve did with uh, Team Fortress, the invasion update. If you don't know the story behind that, I'm not going to get into it, but it is a dumpster fire. Dumpster fire of a story. I'll just yeah. say that. But, um, I've been talking a lot about this, so, Zach, I want to ask you, what do you think about the update? Like... Do you have any um, complaints or anything? I mean, it, it, one thing, I wanted more guns than uh, more melee weapons, but um, <laughs> <laughs> you, you know me, I, I love my guns in uh, Left 4 Dead. Technically, <laughs> technically, like I said, they did technically add new guns for some people. Not, not everyone not is CSS. using the weapons. <laughs> I didn't want CSS weapons, but the, <laughs> other than CSS weapons, I, I don't mind those, but I want them other than the CSS weapons. Like, I don't know. Like, I is there anything... launcher? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that'd be a much. Honestly, or... if they were adding a new gun, I would like a, a double barrel shotgun. Honestly, that, I think that, that would be enough for them. Or I, I would also want something to uh, burn with, other than the uh, Molotov and gas cans. Like a flamethrower? Yes. Like a, like a, like a portable flamethrower? That'd be kind of cool, honestly. I feel like for them to do that, they would need it to be kind of like the chainsaw. 
a special tier weapon yes. where like you can't replenish the ammo or something. But here's, but um, here's an idea if anyone wants to add new ideas for Left 4 Dead 2. If you want to make mods, go for it. Like have have yeah. certain uh, items to to uh, restore certain weapons. Mm. Like not a bad idea. Like. For the for the chainsaw, you, you need to find a special gas can. It could be something like that, yeah. Like find a find like a blue gas can and uh, restore it. Right. Not see, it's not a bad idea, but like I think that's part of the appeal of the weapons is that like they're special, and that's yes, what makes them the, special. And, it's like and you can't the, uh, special ammo, uh, special ammo uh, pickups are very rare to spawn. Like about yeah, I think ten percent. Yeah, yeah. Make them rarer than like the the the, the uh, incendiary and explosive ammo, and now, also make them only spawn if you have the the weapon that corresponds to it. I think. I that mean would by very rare, I mean like like in a way like uh, Jimmy Gibbs uh, spawn. Oh in, man! In a uh, dead center. In dead center finale. And, that uh, would be the, ultra rare. And the um, yeah. <laughs> the uh, the Midnight Riders tour bus. Yeah, it's not a bad idea. I feel like it's something you'd need to experiment in game to see how it would work. But you know, it's not a bad idea on paper. I wouldn't be against it. But um, yeah, I'm honestly just hoping that they're able to do more updates. Like I'm ho I'm hoping they can do another content update sometime down the line. Maybe they add like a new gun, like we talked about. Maybe they add a new sawed-off shotgun or something, or or anything a new special weapon, any other weapon. Yeah, like, add new melee weapons if you want. I'll take some new melee weapons. You can do some more. I don't care. I'm down. You know, as long as they aren't stupid. <laughs> yeah, I'm bring back so, the riot shield, please. <laughs> yeah, that's actually one I want them to bring back. That's a good point. Thank you for bringing that up. Riot shield. Or, or do Easter egg weapons. Weapon. Do Easter egg weapons as well. Like, um... Like the foam finger from Suicide Blitz? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that'd, that'd be a good one. Uh, I would think of the pipe wrench from Opposing Force. Yeah, like that, that'd actually be a pretty good... Um, I actually wouldn't mind that as a melee weapon, a pipe wrench. That'd be kind of cool. I'm going to be against that. Or here's a, here's a silly weapon uh, easter egg for you. Find the barnacle. <laughs> oh no. Or the spore launcher. Yeah, just stuff like, yeah, it'd be cool. Like, you know how uh, in Last Stand, spoiler alert, there's a golden crowbar on the Last Stand map and on the survival maps. That's a cool Easter egg. <laughs> yes. It doesn't function any differently, it's just a gold crowbar, which is cool. But, um... Like, for example, yeah. if you've never played any of Valve's games, like, um, Half-Life or whatever, um, me and Ray has done a lot of co-op shit, um, go look up my fan co-op stuff. <laughs> yeah, do it. It's fun. Literally, um, um, I was gonna, I was gonna say that I, I, I think I briefly mentioned a criticism about the melee weapons being inconsistent with what they promised. That that's kind of what bothers me. Another thing that kind of bothers me, and and I haven't experienced it personally, but I agree with people's criti criti uh, like uh, critiques on this, is that the Counter Strike weapons are unbalanced for versus mode. I think yeah. that's a valid complaint, honestly. Like, for example, the op, uh, it's not great, you know, it's kind of a waste of a spawn in versus where you need to keep moving. But the thing with the op is it's really strong, which is the thing that makes it in unique. It's the strongest sniper in the game. It does more damage than all other snipers, which is cool. Like, for example, but, it's a Counter-Strike Source counterpart. Yeah, it, it's basically how it acts in Source, you know, in a sense, it's the same model and everything. But, like, if I recall correctly, the hunting, scout, and military do 90 damage per shot. Uh, like, base damage. Like, that's the base damage that's not afflicted by headshot multipliers and whatever. But, um, the op does more than that. It's like 110, 120, 100, yeah, something like that. You just have to it's make a perfect something. shot on one of those zombies. Yeah. Literally, you have to like, get a perfect aim. Like, on a, for example, a charger. <laughs> or, yeah. a, or a tank. You, you could, uh... In theory, I think you could one-shot a charger at full health with the op. Like, seriously. Aim for the Maybe. head. Aim but, for um, the what I was gonna head. say is... Go ahead. 
Yeah. Like, if if you want to make the balance for the... What I was going to say is... Um, source weapons. Um, balance the fucking up first. Because, uh, yeah, one shot on, on an I, enemy... Let, 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 let me... <laughs> Uh, Let me finish my, uh, my, my, the, the, uh, the thing. Um, yeah, the op is strong. It's supposed to be strong, but there should probably be a change to make it a little more useful in versus mode or just a balance change. Yes. The, the big thing, in my opinion, and I've noticed this personally just playing campaign, the scout. Now, the scout is technically slower than a hunting rifle and military rifle, but the thing is, it actually has the best accuracy of all the snipers. Which, I guess, is the trade-off. But the thing is, in versus mode, kind of broken. Because that means you could constantly pick Special Infected off without yeah, any... Yeah, uh... shit, by the way. <laughs> yeah, that's a balance issue. That's what I'm saying. That you could basically pick off Special Infected with no problem. Compared to the hunting rifle, where there's a spread on your shots when you shoot it. Because it's kind of automatic. And since the scout is a bolt action... Uh, in between each shot, your accuracy just pretty much resets, and you're good to go. The thing is really accurate. That needs to be changed. It needs to still have the buff of, like, you know, the benefit of, oh, it's slower fire rate, it's a little more accurate. It should not be laser accurate. That's a bit much. <laughs> Unless you want to make it like the CSS counterpart, which, uh, well, that's the, thing. the bullet strays. It, it does kind of, it do, yeah, that's what they need to do. They need to do it like the CSS counterpart. Like, even more so. Like, there needs to be more time before you stand still. Like, when you stand still in the game, there needs to be more time for the crosshair to shrink. Like, it can't just be almost instant like it is. It ne there needs to be more time. Because otherwise, it's kind of ridiculous right now, and it's not fun to fight against, from what I understand. Now, the, yeah. S the SG and the MP5... To me personally, I haven't heard any complaints about that. I kind of feel like those are balanced pretty well, honestly. MP5 now, the knife, kind of fits easy and balanced. Oh, the knife. The uh, knife, give, though. I'll get to that. <laughs> I'll get to that. One second. The, uh, the MP5 sits in between the SMG and the silenced SMG. Because I think it does like, it's kind of like the in-between of them. Slower fire rate, same mag size, but like, I think it does more damage. I believe. And um, the SG is like a hybrid of a sniper and an assault rifle because it has the zoom function. And it kind of reminds me of how the, the Left 4 Dead 1 assault rifle works, in a sense, but with a, but with a zoom, basically. Yes. The M16? Is it an M16? I think it's what yes. it is. I don't really remember. Yeah. Yeah, those are fine. I haven't heard anybody complain about those, honestly. Like, those seem balanced. Those seem okay. You know, they seem like they fit. <laughs> Now, the knife, on the other hand, the knife used to be uh, really strong for some weird reason. Uh, it used to be very fast. <laughs> very fast. And now it's gotten actually, it was actually nerfed. It actually is slow now. I think it's the same swing speed as, like, maybe, it's like a little slower than the machete, I think. I think. It's yeah. something like that. But what I, what I should say, it should... It should be like the uh, Counter-Strike Source version, like, in a way, like, it has... I think it should be, like, it should have two fire modes? Is that what you mean? Like, like quick swings and a heavy swing? In a way, yes. Uh, if you you get, could make... That'd be unique. Behind, that'd be cool. If you get behind of an enemy, uh, simply, uh, the animation will change. Mmm, that's not a bad idea, actually. That'd be kind of cool. I like, wouldn't be against that. On the primary fire, if you get behind of an infected, like a special infected, for example, like the Charger, instant kill. Oh, man. That would be cool. Honestly, you can make the knife uh, actually a pretty unique melee weapon. Like, from what you said, to go off that idea. Um, you could, in theory, you can make the knife function like the knife in, in the Resident Evil remake. Like, Resident or... Evil 2 remake. You could, you could use it. And then lose it to instant kill a special infected. That gets too close. But, That'd be kind of cool. But I'm trying to say it. It would be like the CSS one. Like uh, when you get yeah. behind of an yeah, 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 yeah. like an opponent or another player, you can press the instant right kill. the right uh, button and stab them immediately in the back. Yeah. And that kills yeah, them well, immediately because if, if you've never seen us play CSS before, um. Uh, during 2013, I did stab Ray in the ass. 
Yeah, shameless <laughs> plug. I was gonna say my idea. I was just I was building that off idea off of what you said. But um, yeah, I, I think that'd be cool. Uh, you can make that unique. You can make the knife a unique melee weapon, kind of like the chainsaw. You know, it'd be kind of cool. Like the knife, you can make it's like, oh, it's not bad normally, but like, oh, what if you what if you manage to get behind a special infected? Now the thing is, most special infected die in one hit for melee weapons. It's just kind of how it is. The only one that doesn't, well, only three they don't, is the tank, the witch, and the charter. But you can one hit kill the charter if you hit him in the head. But not not easy to do. <laughs> so yeah, cause... you can make it. You can make it an effective charger killer. You can make it the charger killer, which I think is not a bad idea for the meta. You know, that'd be kind of neat. I know that you can just kill charges yeah, easily by dodging. Be a little tricky. Yeah, see, I don't know if the knife should be able to insta-kill a tank. Maybe it should just do a lot of damage. Like, now, two, probably... maybe, like, if you do a back... Go ahead. Now, for the knife on the tank, it'll probably take about 1,000 health each. I was gonna, yeah, I was going to say that if you do a backstab on the tank, it should probably be the equivalent of, like, four melee hits from a normal melee. Yes. Just, just a knife. That could be kind of cool. Now for the but, witch. Um, <laughs> the witch... Oh, man. See, the witch is kind of an interesting thing, because if you add another thing that can let you instant kill a witch, that's kind of like... I mean, it gives you another method to kill a witch or really win, uh, injure her, but, like, I think crowning is probably the best bet to go. Now, of course, you can cheese her with the Magnum, the AK, and the Sniper, and Explosives, but I you think... You can also cheese her with the Chainsaw, but you can't do that with the Chainsaw. Witches. <laughs> yeah, you can only do that with Wandering Witches. <laughs> but, um, yeah. I, I, we apologize, by the way. Uh, we were talking about Last Stand, but I think this has kind of turned into talking about drama from Last Stand, the Last Stand update, and just ideas for whatever they could do in the future. But anyways, um, you know? back to uh, the last stand update, but um, thank you for listening to that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. sorry about that tangent. Uh, the update, once again, I think it's really good. It's not perfect. I really hope they can do more. And I really hope that the community lets up on them. Because like they, some of these people have been ridiculous. Like Apparently some people were getting death threats about the game, about the update. It's like, come on, seriously? Leave them alone. <sighs> Leave them the fuck alone. Yeah. Like I will say, there is one more. There is one. There is one more critique I should. I feel like I want to give regarding the Counter Strike weapons is if you're not gonna rebalance them, at least make it to where in versus mode they don't spawn. I think that's the best way you can do it. Yeah. Just make it an option, or just make it to where versus mode they don't spawn. Just like grenade. Just like um. The the uh, explosive ammo doesn't spawn in verses normally. It's just incendiary ammo. You do something like that. Yes. Now I think that might like if you don't want to rebalance it, just do it that way. I suppose. Anyways, that's uh, that's going to be it on the uh, yeah. on the last stand uh, update and yeah. drama. Um, um, we might bring up Left 4 Dead again in another episode because there is still a lot of stuff we want to talk about. Yes. But uh, overall, just play it if you haven't played Left 4 Dead 2. Now it's the time to do it. There's, it's, it's really thriving. A lot of mods. New update came out like a month or two ago at this point. It's awesome. Enjoy it. Also, fuck some of the new achievements. I hate survival personally, and I do not want to do those achievements. But God, we're gonna yeah. be doing them at some point. <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, wish us luck as a achievement hunting. <laughs> yeah, we'll. Uh, me and Zach are gonna be. We'll be doing playthroughs of that shit together. Because, yeah. uh, well, yeah, um, no, I don't no. even want to start. We have been taking a break <laughs> from Doom. We have been taking a break from Doom, but that's going to be coming oh, yeah, a general discussion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. We've been, this has been going on for a while, so we should probably move through these next things kind of quick. Like, yes. this has been going on for like two hours, I think. Anyways, we should probably thank you, thank you of uh, listening to the uh, Love or Dead uh, and uh, yeah yeah. <laughs> Anyways, oh, another thanks. thing, uh, Zach, I am I'm gonna pitch this to you real quick. I don't know if this will be in the finished video, but if you want, we could put some timestamps in the description so people can skip around if they want. Not a bad uh, idea. Yeah, like if, use if the I new timestamp feature. If I remember correctly, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think it would have to remind Just, me. Um, uh, yeah, I'll remind you. Sure, just let me know when you're editing it, and I'll uh, I'll help you out with that. 
Yes. Anyways, uh, we've got a couple things left here. Um, I'll go ahead and read them off just so you just see what we have. Uh, Nekapara, which, once again, I don't know much about it. Uh, and there's a bonus topic, and we did have general discussion on here, but I don't know if we're going to do that or not, because like I said, it's been kind of late. We've been doing this for a while, but we can cover Nekapara next, I suppose, because that's one of the things you suggested. All right, um, let's go. Um, Nekapara. Um, Nekapara Volume 4 is the next uh, volume to the Nekapara series, right after uh, the release of Nekapara Extra. When it is actually a when Nekapara Extra is actually a prequel prequel to uh, Nekapara Volume Zero. Then you got Nekapara One, Nekapara Volume One, Two, and Three. Um, during my old playthroughs of the those four uh, other games, uh, <laughs> we, uh, we uh, me and Ray uh, did something uh, silly, and I regret sometimes. <laughs> We are uh, we are not going to talk about that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, Hold on a second. Um, Nekapara has been around since, if I can recall correctly, it's been around. <clears throat> oh shit. I believe. I do believe for a while now, but let me check on my computer here on my desktop to see when it first uh, came out. For example, got my throat hurts a little bit. Now, if you never played Necropara or play or watch it, uh, watch someone play it, um, I suggest doing that. And I'm uh, trying to remember uh, when the first volume came out, and it's been like <laughs> I don't even know of how many years now. Because uh, the uh, last, I will, the last it's been a was it's extra. been a few years, right? I will mention, like I kind of said prior, I don't have experience with this stuff. I'm not into visual novels, but um, I have seen images. I've seen Zach playing it every now and then, and um, yes. Um, honestly, it's not for me. I can see the appeal, but not for me. That's not, all. That's all I gotta say. It's not his cup of tea. <laughs> that that is not my cup of tea. of tea. Yeah. Okay. First volume came out in 2014. So, yeah. Hmm. Wow. Now, if so I uh... yeah, wow, it's crazy. Now, if I type in Nekapara on the search for on the Steam store, um, here we go. Let me just read off the years for the volumes and stuff. 2014, 2017, 2016, um, 2015, and then 2018. Uh, for extra, so that's like about two years after volume four now. Who? Damn. So I'm volume down. four is coming out this November of of the twenty sixth, twenty twenty. Hmm. And guess what? Also, there's the anniversary of Half Life coming. So. Yeah. So, uh, I imagine Zach's looking forward to... Uh, you're looking forward to the new volume, I imagine. Yes, because <clears throat> I already saved up uh, enough money to probably get it and uh, do a playthrough of it. Awesome, man. Yeah. Good shit. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, volume four is going to be the new installment of the Necropara series. Even um, Necropara Live is... Nec Neko Pa Live is not really a visual novel. It's a VR like stage game that you can oh, just God. screw around with. Oh it's, God! <laughs> when, you, when you think about it, it's like a sandbox, anyway. Yeah, yeah. But um, other than that, um, oh. Nekapara, um, enjoyed it, but. 
if you're looking for the 18 plus stuff, get the fucking patches if you're into that right now. Lord. Don't play them on YouTube. Uh, no. Don't play the 18 <clears throat> no plus comment. content. Don't play the 18 plus Hello. content on YouTube. You will get banned. Literally. Because <laughs> yes. YouTube has yeah. re been removing a lot of people from doing that. Mm -hmm. I'm saying, oh no, these people are like in, in their in their teens and whatnot, but they're not human. They just look like they're teenagers. In a way. Yeah, that's um, that is one thing I don't really kind of jive with. Like, I know I know they're not human and, and all that, but it's a little weird to me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's just how I feel about it, though. I think it's a little odd, but it's not bad. You know, it could but be a hell thing. of a lot worse. Cats, so. cats can age. Cats can actually age of getting older. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know. I know. That's older. what I'm saying. I know. I know they're not. They're not human. Yeah, that's obviously they're not human. But like, I could see why some people think that it's a little, mm, a little weird. You know, I can understand that. You know, it, it's it's a fair critique in my opinion. You know, I can understand it. Because people, uh, people of the anime community already mentioned this. Yeah. The, the Nekos are like the actual cats we have. Except they're human. Human-like. Which is, um, which is, uh, something. <laughs> A little weird, like I said. Like, uh, like I mean, I'm not trying to sound like an ass or anything, but like it's just, eh, eh, I can't get into it. <laughs> now, whenever a cat ages to a year, they're like about, they're like uh, already an adult, right? <clears throat> but if they reach like two years, they're more of an adult. So there you go. That's a little cat lesson, because I own a lot of cats in my day already. Mm-hmm. That's true. Anyway, um... True. There's also the Necropar anime series, and then the uh, two OVAs after that. Um, but anyways, this was about Necropar Volume 4. You will get to see new characters. Yeah. I, I hope so. Jesus, I hope it's not in the same damn game. <laughs> You'll be meeting Kashu's father and mother. Also, uh, Kashu's uh, mentor, who uh, taught him to make sweets. You know, like cakes yeah. and all that. And also, her cat girl. Excuse me, sorry. <clears throat> now, anyways, um... Thank you of listening to this topic, and that was Necropara Volume yeah. Four. Uh, uh, right once again, just to give my point of view, um, I hope you're looking for. I know you're looking forward to it, Zach. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope you enjoy it. I hope it's good. But like I said, not really my thing. <laughs> so if somebody in the qu in, in the comments is like, "Hey Ray, what do you think of this visual novel?" Look, to be real with you. I don't have an experience with it. It's not my cup of tea. Sorry. Now, there are, there are some little anime games I would probably suggest to them, but not have them, like, get in, full-blown into anime stuff, you know? The closest I've got to being in, really into anime was Castlevania. the Castlevania Netflix series. Yeah. Yeah, that was really good. <laughs> Wasn't there also a Baron sure. one as well? Yeah, and it's okay. It, it, it's okay. It's not bad, but, like, I'd rather play the game. <laughs> the game's more fun yeah. than watching the anime. And yeah. Pokemon. Jesus. Um, Ray, Ray, watched, oh. Ray only watched it Pokemon. during Generation 1. That's it. <laughs> yeah, I watched, I watched it when I was young. Um, nowadays, I don't hate Pokemon, but I don't like it either. Like, it's not my thing. Like, I think it's cool, you know? But... Uh, I can't get into it personally. Like, Keeping eh. Ash 10 years old it, it is still bubbling my mind. <laughs> like, Man is eternally 10 years old. <laughs> like, he... Like, it took... Uh, 
he's he's like about in his twenties. Yeah. Right now. Yeah, he should be. Yeah, and but oh my God. here's the thing. Uh Pokedex entry uh, from Ho Ho is eternal happiness. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so there you go. Um, yeah. Yeah. So it keeps him and uh, Pikachu young? Mm. In a sense. So there you go. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, like I said, hope you're looking forward to that new volume. I hope it's good. I hope it's not stupid. You know. <laughs> um, you know, there's going to be there was... shenanigans anyway. Yeah, I, like, I hope it's not stupid in the sense of, like, it's not good. Like, it just does, like, there's bad shit in it. It's not, like, doesn't make any sense or anything. Yeah, um, it's already going to, there's already going to be a Volume 5, which is being made as well. Well, that's good, at least. You know, you're getting a sequel. It's a four. I'm like, Jesus. <laughs> Yeah, they must have a plan. They must have a plan. Oh, yeah. Probably, Volume 5 won't probably be released this year. But, um... Yeah, probably probably next year, at least. Quarter 1 and quarter 2. Um, uh, to, to, to go to the other thing, Zach said he had a bonus topic for me. So, uh, I don't know what this is. He did not tell me before the recording. I don't know what he's talking about. So, Zach, what's this bonus topic? I want Okay, to um... <laughs> Now it's it's about epic. Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> what about it, epic? Let's talk. But it's about one of epic's most lovely franchise that I enjoyed the most. Okay. I think you I'm know listening. what I mean. Yeah. Go on. I'm listening. Go. So Let's this go. is about Unreal, the Unreal series, not the fucking engine. <laughs> Not the <internet. laughs> And I am talking about. So that. you, but you want? I want. You want to discuss on back. that? I I want the series come back, literally. Like if Epic do, uh, does. Want yeah. To make when was the last? Anymore? When was the last Unreal game? Unreal Tournament Three. Twenty twelve. Which came out. Oh my god. Yeah, it's been a while. Jeez, yeah, it's been eight that, years. And that one Unreal Tournament game that was supposed to come out three fucking years ago? Canned. Yeah, see, that, that, that's the thing. Uh, I agree epic. with you, Zach. Well, well you know what happened. It's called they got Fortnite. <laughs> they got Fortnite. They don't need it anymore. That's what they're thinking. They're like, oh, we don't need Unreal and stuff anymore. We could just bank off of Fortnite. But seriously... That's There's like, nothing uh, wrong with single player games either. You know? Yeah. Mm hmm. Single player games are really good still. You know, you just gotta find the right one. Like, I enjoy Unreal. And I also enjoy Gears of War, which they gave it to somebody else. <laughs> but seriously, Epic, you were driving me yeah, insane. Yeah, that's right, they did. And that's right. They did indeed do that. Like, if you want to get rid of Unreal, give it to Yeah, else. I don't blame you, because, like, here, here's the thing. For, yeah, I say, for, for transparency, I've not played any Unreal game. I own Unreal Gold. Zach gifted it to me. I believe you did. But, I got uh, it for free. I, I got it for free. Okay. On the anniversary of one of the anniversaries. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, I haven't played it yet. I intend on playing it, but. I understand how Zach feels in this position. You know, he's a fan of this series, and there hasn't been a new game in eight years. And it's kind of obvious that they don't want to do anymore, so it's like, if you guys aren't going to do anything with this IP, how about you just, like, give it, like, be like, hey, let's, um, let's outsource this uh, IP to a developer and let them make an Unreal game. Why not do that? You know? Let's just do that. Yeah, I'm, I'm down for that. Like, seriously, there are so many developers. There are so many developers that you can choose from. Yeah. Maybe Valve would probably yeah. like to do that, you know? Valve doing an Unreal game. See, that would be kind of cool, but honestly, I don't, I, I don't know if they would, I don't know if they would like to do that, but I would, I think it'd be kind of cool to see them do that. Like a, I don't know, like a, a Unreal a game. VR game, like uh, what you see with Half-Life Alex. There you go. 
Yeah, you could do an Unreal VR game, or like they could do a new Unreal game that's like your your typical PC and mouse, or your P, like your mouse and keyboard sort of thing as like a throwback, like a retro fo- throwback to Unreal. Like it would probably be the continuation of Unreal Two: The Awakening. Either right. that, like there are so many ways. There are so many ways mm-hmm. you can make an Unreal game. Like there are the races. There are the other weapons. Like, seriously. Uh Unreal Gold only has two expansions. One does not make sense to me, because Return to Nala Paul, Mission Pack 1, where's Mission Pack 2? (laughs) Yeah. Like, that doesn't make any sense, Epic. Like, Epic has been around for a long time. One of the first games I've played from them was Unreal and Jill the Jungle. Jill the Jungle was when they were called Epic Mega Games. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and See, that's... Oh, man. And that was during oh. DOS's time. Anybody play DOS? Yeah, Here that... you go. <laughs> yeah, right. See, like I said, I feel, I feel for you, man. You know, it's frustrating. It's like, man, I would love to see this series continue. But, oh no, Epic has fucking Fortnite... And they basically don't need to make any other game because they have Fortnite. Like, that's kind of just how it is at the moment. And that sucks. Like, someday Fortnite will die. Someday. Yeah, Fortnite will, uh, Fortnite will probably have a similar th- thing to happen to Minecraft where it's going to die off for a little while and then it might come back into popularity. But like, yeah, it's eventually going to die. Here's die the, off. It, like, the it battle will die, die off. off battle Royale will probably die off in the far future. Just like PUBG and uh, other games like it. Yeah, like, I think Battle Royale as it is right now, like, I think it's still fairly popular. And I'm be real with you, I don't really like Battle Royale. Like, I think it's a cool idea, but I feel like this, there's too many games trying to do it. That's my problem. There's way too many games trying to do Battle Royale now. Even fucking Counter-Strike Global Offensive has a Battle Royale mode. Yeah. What uh, the hell? Fuck that, Valve. <laughs> Fuck that. I am I am not gonna play Counter Strike Global Offensive because of that bullshit. I'll probably play it for arms race. That's pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, if you've never seen me play arms race, go to Rage Channel. Yeah, um oh, God. This is probably a whole other topic for another podcast, but Battle Royale kind of irritates me, honestly, and the whole fads and video games do. But, um, yeah, like I said, Zach, I really hope that the, the, that either they outsource somebody to do an Unreal game, or like maybe when Fortnite dies down, maybe they'll do a new Unreal game. I hope that they do that, honestly. And just because, like, I know you're a big fan... Like, I hope that you get a new one, you know? And it's a good game, and it makes a lot of people happy. I hope that happens. But yes. at, right now, it doesn't seem like it's going to happen. That's the sad thing. Like, hmm. Unless, oh, uh, man. Unless a uh, freaking Epic gets bought out by Microsoft, like uh, Bethesda. <laughs> oh, Jesus. If that were to happen, that would be like, what the hell are you doing, Microsoft? Jeez. Jeez. <laughs> like, like, Microsoft would go like, Okay, fans been wanting an Unreal game. You're, you're going to be making it right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, man. Like, I, I think I understand it so well because I'm, I was kind of in a position of that with the Metroid series for a while. Metroid you Prime know? 4. Prime 4, which apparently uh, this isn't related, but I just want to drop this. We might talk about it in another podcast if more info comes out. But apparently Prime 4 is in development hell at Retro. <laughs> Apparently, that's something that might be going on, which is... Oh, boy. That's kind of worrying. I, I really hope they don't cancel Prime 4, dude. I'm worried. <laughs> I'm genuinely worried that that might happen. Like, I'm actually kind of concerned. Not well, lie. considering about the, uh, the uh, COVID going on, too. Yeah, like, I can understand that imp- impacting development, but, like, I don't... Like, I think I saw it... it I don't remember where it was, but... It was from a fairly credible uh, uh, leaker, reporter, you know. They were like, hey, yeah, this is happening. They didn't really elaborate, but, like, I, I hope more details come out if it's true, because I'm like, what's going on, you know? 
But um, anyways, yeah, I understand what you mean because for the longest, uh, there was other M, 2010, and then it was about five or six years we got Federation Force, and it was like, what the fuck is this? Shit? <laughs> yeah, Nobody just, wanted Nintendo. Federation yeah, Force. Nintendo. <laughs> and then like a year and a half later, they're like, oh yeah, Samus Returns, a remake, and Metroid Prime Four now in development, and it was like, oh, okay. We would have been not upset if you said those two first, and then Federation Force. <laughs> like, honestly, I would have been okay with that, but no, they didn't do that. <laughs> now, uh, for you all to wonder, uh, what would be the next podcast? Um, we, we, will, we will have to figure it out. We will figure it out. We'll probably talk about it a little bit after we um, finish this up. But, um, yeah, in summary, I haven't played Unreal. I own Unreal Gold. I want to play it. Uh, and once again, Zach, like I said, I really hope that they do a new game. Honestly, I hope they do. And yeah, it, it, it deserves a comeback, I think. Like, for sure. Seriously. Hell, if, if I think the best scenario, they bring back Unreal, and they bring back Unreal Tournament. They bring back both. Both gelling together. You get the multiplayer and the single player. That yes. would be pretty shit. That would be pretty slick. I almost said shit. That would be pretty slick. Like, that like, would be awesome. Give it the Doom Eternal <laughs> feel. Yeah. Give it, give it the deep, give it like the kind of retro, but oh, hey, it's 2020. Look at how pretty the game is, you know? Like, that, that, that sort of thing. Like, oh, man. Yeah, look how many fucking years it suffered. It took so long to make a Doom game. Yeah. I'm glad we got the Doom we got instead of, uh, I'm glad we got that game instead of uh, the Call of Duty looking one that we almost got. Oh, Ooh, boy. The uh, so called uh, Doom 4. Doom 4, yeah. Doom 2016 is more Doom 4 than Doom 4. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. God. Yeah. No. Like, I think Doom 2016 is great as a side tangent. It's great, but I think it's also the best Serious Sam game I've ever played because it plays a lot like a Serious Sam game. <laughs> you think now, about it. Here's the thing. If, uh, if you guys want to know why, why I'm talking about Unreal, go look up Unreal, not the engine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the game series. Yeah, the, the series. It's a game series as well. Yes. So go play back the Unreal Gold, because before Unreal yeah. Gold, there was regular Unreal. That, yeah. that was released in May 22nd, 1998. Same year as Half Life. Yeah. So think about it. I will it. say, in in this era of like a lot of people playing older shooters, you know, people jokingly call it boomer shooters, like go back and check it out. You might actually really like it. Honestly. You never know. Give it a shot. Go for Considering it. Considering Unreal was my very first uh, FPS uh, when I was younger. Yeah. You have a lot of you have a lot of attachment to it. You're yes. nostalgic for it. You really like it, you know? You grew up with it. That's awesome. I feel that, man. It's yes, good. Yeah, and I was five. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I was really young when I first played Metroid Prime, and look at that. Metroid is like my all-time favorite franchise, personally. Like, I love Metroid to death. I'm very passionate about it. Now, it's anyways, amazing. Thank you all for listening to this topic on Unreal. Um, we'll probably yeah. talk about the general topics uh Whenever we can get back to yeah, our podcast. We might, we might save that for our next episode. Because we are going to try to do episodes for this. I know that. Like, I don't know if we decided on this yet. This might be episode zero or one. Maybe zero. Just because, you know, why not, I guess. And uh, we're going to try to come up with a name with it. Uh, we're going to try to come up with a name for this. And hopefully we can try and get a schedule. Maybe. Bros Depends. Cast. We'll see. Broscast? Ah, oh, yeah, that might work. I don't know why that might I just work. thought about it because uh, <laughs> cause all the fucking co-op shit we've been doing. <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll talk about it uh, post screen. You, you never know. This first episode or episode zero might already have a title by the time this is up. You never know. Yes. And uh, yeah. Um, so just to quickly reiterate what we covered, um, and once again, we'll try to do timestamps. That'd be uh, <laughs> that'd be nice. One second. Yes. Uh, give me a sec, I'm sorry. Uh, we covered Microsoft buying Bethesda and Microsoft hinting at Bethesda exclusives, Resident Evil 8, uh, the Sly Cooper kind of like series overview and the HBO thing, which is really exciting for you, I imagine. Mm -hmm. Um, Necopar Volume 4, 
You're also excited for that. And we talked about Left 4 Dead 2's new update after almost 10 years, the last stand update, the drama. And we also discussed some ideas for future updates, if they ever do one. Mm-hmm. As well as what if Epic were to revive Unreal. That's what we just talked about as well. So, yes. yeah, I think that pretty much covers it. Um, I don't know if every podcast will be this long. <laughs> we're kind of all over the place, honestly, because this is like the first time we've done one of these in a while. So, yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. We'll try yeah, and keep a, it a little more organized. We're a little rusty. But... We're a little rusty. Yeah, we were kind of all over the place. But um, hopefully the fu- future episodes will be a little more organized. You know? Hope so. And uh, once again, to remind him here, and I'll remind him afterwards, we are going to try and do chapter timestamps. So you can skip around. Because, yes. you know, hey, not everybody has the time to listen to an almost two-hour podcast. <laughs> So, yeah. and uh, one yeah. we were, I was interrupted and I had to pause the recording. So, oh my god, what's going on? Right? Uh, oh shit! Oh no. Uh, your net died. Right. Ray. Damn it, Discord! Why'd you gotta do that to me? Oh. It begins. Yep. Uh oh. Is it okay? Yes, it's okay. Okay, okay, cool. Do you wanna go ahead and record a quick outro? Yes. Anyways, this has been Inferno, Shadow Blade 95, also known as Shadow Blade 95, uh, 93, I almost said 95. <laughs> and uh and I've been to CX. And uh we'll see you in uh, more podcasts in the future. Indeed. Anyways, this will be part zero or one, depends if I wanna put the number for the episode. Mm-hmm. Anyways, thank you all for watching. Mm-hmm. Peace out. Keep on stealth. The leaders and your outros are all over the place, too. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Don't worry. We're fucking, we're fucking up. <laughs> I'm up with one, man. I kept the one for... I, a, I, I kept the same one yeah, for a I, long time. Yeah. Look, the one I had was always, thank you so much for watching, and goodbye, darlings. I think that's what I had for the yes. longest. So I guess I'll, uh, thank you so much for watching, and goodbye, darlings. And... That's a wrap. Laters. That is a wrap.